YouTube Streets Podcast, man. Yeah. Hey, we, listen, we got a legendary one. The one, the only, the TikTok. Hey, listen. Vice. First, we'll start with Vice. All the way to TikTok, YouTube. And, dude, this dude interviewing the biggest names in the game, bro. All the Johnny way from Mitchell, Chevy Chase. Let's not, let's, yeah. All the way from Chevy Chase to DVS. Hey, we got Ian Bick in the house. What's up, bro? Yeah, what's up, man? Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. We also got a AZ Ruction, Ronnie yeah. Blue Eyes, of course, <laughs> and DBS himself. This is the YouTube Streets Podcast, brother. Welcome, welcome. Salute. Now, first things first, bro. We know you're from Connecticut, but how was it growing up in Connecticut? Um, It wasn't like New York, I'll tell you that. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was interesting, you know, it was the suburbs, uh, low key. Um, you know, it was a, it was a pretty uh, it, it, you know, it was normal. I I don't know really know what to compare it to. I'm sure you know we all grew up differently, and it will grew up differently than than I did. Um, we all come from different backgrounds. You didn't grow up in the trenches, correctly? Correct. No, no, I didn't grow up in the trenches. My I I, I got into the trenches from my own doing. <laughs> <laughs> Been there. Be like that. You should take accountability like though. That's what's up. Yeah. But you've had the brains for a long time. Were you, I remember you saying before you were really good in school and you were you went to college? No, I never went to college. Uh, so I, is that when you did the club thing instead? Yeah, I did that. I got into promoting my sophomore year of high school. I was a big like house party kid and kind of turned that into a business. And um, then I got into, yeah. you know, the, the world of nightclubs and stuff. Yeah, money. Oh. And that's where the Vice uh, video comes in. And you were just a legend doing that, bro. And that's what eventually you led you to go into prison correct yeah i mean it had to do with money and losing money on concerts i mean the, the nightclub concert business is high risk especially when you're using other people's money um so it got me into trouble huh. yeah. wow well I, I i i personally right i i think that uh it's genius i mean it was a bad you know decision all around the board but i think that the, the smarts that you have and that you possess right was it influence, like nurture versus nature kind of thing? Or was it somebody that um, you looked up to or followed behind and say, yo, listen, this is the route that I want to go and this is where I'm taking it? I think it was all, it, it's it, uh, to be an entrepreneur. It's kind of like it, 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 you're born with it. Um, yeah. I've always made my own decisions. I kind of followed my own path and everything just came like fell into to place the way it was supposed to. Like this whole YouTube thing, like for years, I was always intimidated by YouTube. I never thought I'd be a YouTuber. Um, and, and I look at how hard it is to grow on YouTube and just like the growth that's been done in a year. Like, you know, I, I found my purpose and I was kind of thrown into that. And I'm just I'm, I'm along for the journey with that. Yeah, you came in and you definitely found a wave, man. And you definitely you had the experience. And I, I joke sayingly, uh, you know, that uh, you went to one of the best colleges in America, man. <laughs> You know, yeah. um, even though you didn't go to, even though you didn't actually go to a, a prestige college, you definitely went to one of the best colleges in America. And um, it shows, man, because you definitely took that, you turned it into a positive. You know, it's it's amazing how easily and how, how quick you did this because the genius, I seen it from the beginning, man. And I was like, holy fast. shit. It was definitely fast. You got, this, you got this shit in a headlock. And I said, wow. And I, I, I started picking up things and everybody started noticing. And then when you started getting into the fighting thing and I said, oh, he's really getting into this shit. He's not fucking around. Like he's doing this all the way around the board. And then when you met Tyson, man, it sealed the deal for me because um, Tyson's one of my one of my idols, man. A lot of people nice. don't know this, but, uh, you know, I was in Tryon Residential, man, uh, Limited Secure, the same place he was at. And a lot of those guards, man, they used to pop shit to us and be like, yeah, we used to hem him up and put him like leg locks and we used to fuck Tyson up. Wow. And I used to say to myself, get the fuck out of here. You, you sound stupid. You know what I'm saying? And it just gave me motivation. So I, I just commend you, man, because I seen how you came in and you came in and you took off flying. Thank you, bro. I, I appreciate the kind words. But let's back it up a little bit. So the club thing happens. You get incarcerated. Um, leading up the trial, how was that? What was the process? Your parents were probably devastated at this point. Yeah, I mean, they they were definitely... Um, they were worried. I mean, no one really knows how to navigate that type of situation. Uh, any parent or even a kid, I was, you know, 19 years old, taking the feds to trial. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's me and my lawyer on one side. And then you got the other side where it's like all these government officials and the world. 
Jesus. You were against the world. Yeah, dude. I, the day I, I testified for two days at my trial in the courtroom, you couldn't get a seat. They brought in every law student, intern, agent that they had in the area that had U.S. Wow, attorneys. It was nuts because it's not every day where you have someone going to trial at that age and, yeah. and, and facing them head on, which is, I think, it makes the story very unique. How and much money? Oh, go ahead. Oh, plug, but go I think ahead, you pissed them off when, when you set them down, when they sat down with you and you kind of like, you kind of fucking told them to fuck off. You, you ain't got shit on me type thing. And it kind of pushed them to go a little harder, no? Yeah, I mean, I think I think that didn't help, but I also think going into that that they um, were pissed off to begin with because of what I represented. Like I had the club, I was doing everything my own way. Like I was this young kid, and they already I, I don't think they gave me a fair um, understanding. Like they didn't go into it neutral. They came in out to get me. Um, they, they figured I was the big target. They had their eyes set on me. So I think had it been a little less hostile. Cause they tried to set me up, you know, in the beginning meeting with yeah. me with doing the whole, you don't need a lawyer, this and that acting like you're your friends. So they came at me strong. So I think they could have went about it a whole entirely different way. Um, and they would have saved a lot of money, but you know, it, everything happened for a reason. Now, how, yeah. how old were you when you were going through trial? Um, I got, and uh, I was under investigation when I was 18. Um, mm -hmm. And then I was sentenced to prison when I was 21. So between, you know, 18 and 21, I was, I was fighting my case. And, and getting, you know, preparing yourself for that when you realized you were actually going to go to prison, uh, what did you do to mentally, like, you know, prepare for that? I had no time to prepare. They revoked my bond. <laughs> and, uh, Damn. Oh, no shit. Oh, right? you, they fucking, they shell shocked you. That's like throwing you in a tub of ice. Yeah, I thought I wasn't gonna get jail time. My lawyer and I thought we'd get house arrest probation, oh, but then man. my friend snitched on me, said I was going out of state. Uh, always that. It's yeah. always that. Bastard. So, but uh, I mean, I, you look at the whole big picture, even with all the bullshit I did, I guess I got off, you know, there's two sides. Like I got off pretty easy and it could have been way worse because the guidelines were, you know, oh, yeah. 10 to 12 years and I got three. Or some people look at it, that's a lot of time, but then you factor in different things and this and that, you know? It was just, uh, it was, it was a crazy experience. Yeah, definitely. I don't, I, and I know I seen an article somewhere. I don't know if they have blown it out of proportion or what, but it says something around you allegedly were making like a million dollars at around the age sixteen. That's crazy. Is I mean, it was, it wasn't like making as in profit. It was just like that's what we got in with like revenue, investment, right? You know, revenue, this Still and that. Is. Still My not impressive. Was never really profitable, you know. Right. Um, it was right. always high risk, um, zero cash flow type of business. Right. It, it wasn't a good business model, you know, but it could have paid off had everything worked it sounds out. Good, right. Yeah. 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 Still everything impressive worked, though. It, I would have been a millionaire if it worked out. Right. Well, what's the biggest uh, cash out you had that you can remember? Uh, I mean, when I, when I was in high school, I was making, um, you know, ten thousand dollars a night once a Ooh. month. Yeah, clubs are different, man. Clubs, yeah. you can. Yeah, I've done the bouncing work, man. I work security for a few clubs and a few teams, man. And the money that comes in there is, uh, you would, you would, you would, you would, you would be yeah. very well surprised. Like that, on, in Boston too, I when the cash know. comes in, man. Oh, yeah. there's a lot of cash that flows through there. There's nothing like it, absolutely. Yeah, that's wild. Ten k a night in high school, man. And that's not even really a good night, man. I, I'm pretty sure you've seen more. That's like that's like not even a that's a week night, man. I mean, we've grossed, um, we've grossed. You know, I've made fifty, sixty k in a night, but the expenses were high, so it's not like it was right. profit, you know. But when I made real profit, that was in high school. That was where the real money was at. And that's where now. The now day one going into the into the system. What, what, how, how, like, you, you have to be going crazy, and it has to be a, a certain point where I, I know that you talk about this a lot where you pay for protection and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But what did you think, even, even like, how'd you even know to do, like, how'd you even know how the brains to do stuff like that? Um, I think it just, it's just, it's a, you're in survival mode, you know, yeah, you kind of like, I was gonna bring that up, survival. You, you always, you, you know, what a person's breaking point is. Like, some of these dudes, like, uh, that say they're these tough motherfuckers. You know, you can kind of test the waters to see how far they're willing to go. Um, mm -hmm. so when it got to the point where I saw these guys that were like these guys from D.C. that I'd see, they gave no fucks. They came from a pen. They got reduced because of Obama, cut their time. 
And these guys didn't give two fucks because they were, you know, coming from a higher security prison. I'm like, okay, I got to navigate this differently, you know? And then ultimately they ended up getting set up by their own people because they were causing too much ruckus on the compound. Uh, someone planted phones in their beds and they got them out of there. Cause Excuse they, me how it is. Yeah, That's you come happens. from higher security joints and, and you're you're moving like you're still- get scared. Dead. Yeah, they don't want to- get scared. Dead. Exactly. So- um that's just the way it went, you know, and you, you learn how to navigate it. and I kind of see who they're beefing with. Like I've always paid attention to my surroundings. So that's yes. what kind of like help help me navigate that. Would you say uh, working the club and um, being, you know, in the nightlife that actually helped you with your, and worked in your advantage? Eh, I, I guess a little bit. I think when I was dealing, um, when I was like getting money from like drug dealers and shit, um, that, yeah. um, that, that definitely helped me. Um, when, because you're dealing with guys that are threatening you and stuff. So I was used to being in danger and used to being threatened. Um, and I kind of I felt it out in that way. Um, yeah. But other than that, you know, it's, uh, it, 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 you kind of see where it goes. Yeah. It's all, it's all a waiting game and seeing what takes place, man. Um, you know, exactly. just way in the room and seeing who's what, what's, what's what. <clears throat> Very good strategy, man. I can see how yeah. that can work. Absolutely. Did any organization approach you to join them? No, no one even told me. Dude, like that. So in, in the feds, they have like cars, like the Connecticut car, New Jersey right. car, this and that. And it wasn't until it was too late where guys were giving me a hard time where someone was like, the New York car is like to the Connecticut car. Why aren't you guys looking after this dude? Like his paperwork straight, this and that. And no one just like had done the right thing. And by that point, they didn't really want to fuck with me because I – Get, I was like a lone wolf getting into trouble with all this shit. But what they should have done if they were good people is came up to me as a fellow good white guy and, and checked the paperwork and treated me like a normal person. Um, but because of they just automatically assumed, you know, I was a sex offender and never came up to me. No, no care packages, nothing. Um, That's crazy. Yeah, they did yeah, not because any other any other uh, or not even organization, man, race or, or whatever, man. There's already care packages set up for exactly. anybody that lands there. There's there's two or three kitties that's already put together. Oh shit, he just came in. Yo, pass him this and check his paperwork. You know they what I mean? Was the real dirty, which is why, like, I, I didn't give a fuck what happened to them either. You know, um, I, I kind of yeah, see. I saw what type of time it was. Everyone was in for themselves. Mm. Hey, see, in Arizona, they, uh, I, you know, because in Arizona we're uh, racially segregated. Um, so with that being said, when you come in, they're going to check your paperwork, you know, and if everything is good, they're going to give you burritos for spread. They're going to give you food, hygiene, you know, and then you're going to have somebody that's going to come and break down the rules for you. You know what I mean? So they're going to let you know off top what you can and can't do. Don't say this. Don't say bitch. Don't be calling people punks. You know, don't, you know, they'll just break down the whole everything for you. So it's kind of crazy that you got, uh, kind of got burned like that. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it, it was, yeah. And, it was, I, yeah. And, and, and not for, uh, you know, to bring this up, but, um, you know, that, uh, I know you speak candidly about the whole situation with that, that weird ass guard in the kitchen, man, <laughs> in the big shop, man. How, did, was there any, um, like, repercussions anything of that took place like did he ever like get any kind of like uh you know reprimand or counsel or anything like that because yeah, if he did it to you i'm pretty it. sure he did it to yeah. somebody else they buried it i mean they had a, an investigation the sis like lieutenant or whatever <laughs> they sounded like that they were after him they were pursuing him my old bunk mate said that um you know, they they um, they interviewed him. They were definitely doing interviews and shit. And then I even wrote the judge and told him what happened. He ordered like the prosecutors to investigate. And they said like the prison's investigating. Um, and I didn't hear anything from it. And then I actually a guard that was at the medium security prison next to the camp hit me up on Instagram like a few months ago. I was like, hey, is it so and so? I was like, yeah. He's like, I always knew that dude was a creep. So that kind of like validated it. He said he doesn't know where the guy's at now. He probably maybe got forced out of, of the prison system. Uh, maybe they offered him like a retirement pack because they're never going to admit it, you know. I'm right. sure they. Yeah, no, I don't always they, they're they're open up the liability. Less, the less it had on paper, the better. Yeah, so I'm sure they just pushed him out. They offered him like a resign or get fired type of thing. He left it sealed and thrown out, and that's it. Um, or they might have tucked him away on a maintenance crew or something. You never know. 
if you had the know. opportunity, would you box him today? No, nah, I wouldn't box him because he's made me so much money, man, telling that story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He, he, weirdos, man. Some weirdos. You just ugh. listen. It could have been way worse. Um, and right. he wasn't a guy like I was afraid of. It was just right. a creepy type. Of I feel you, bro. I wasn't like afraid afraid of my life with this guy. I was a scrawny dude, you know. Yeah. Um, but mm. it, it's a scary situation when you're an inmate and you're about to go home, and you know anything. They can pull anything. He can say, yeah. "Yo, you did something to him," and then you were in the fucking box. You got a new charge. All kinds yeah, of weird shit. That shit would be super scary. Scary as shit, bro. It's it. They got too much power. Way too much power mm -hmm. when it comes to that. I can't imagine what the women go through. In these types right. of situations. Hey, well, speaking yeah, of boxing, well said. Well uh, speaking said. Speaking of boxing, yeah. what happened with uh, Jumpsu Pablo? Hey, uh, that's just all like that. Uh, <laughs> because you know, listen, we did have Jumpsuit on the podcast, and he still put the offer out there. You know, so where we where we at with that? We want to know. No, nah, I mean, we'll set something up when the time comes, man. But he's my boy. Hey, Any you on social media just for fun and games. I hear you. Uh, so, but you definitely been in. The, I, I definitely. Uh, I know you've been in that ring, uh, testing them hands, man. And you're getting yeah, right you're one and zero. The bro. comfortability, like, the comfortability Ian, is definitely coming, dude. Ian, you're one and zero. Jumpsuit Pablo, we haven't even seen him fight anybody, so it's he, really he like. I'll, I'll tell him he's a pussy. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 we gotta get the beef. Get the clip. Hey, did, out, did Mike Tyson give you advice or what? Yeah, uh, that's no, the question. So when I saw Tyson, he he looks at me and he's like, you know, you look like a smart motherfucker. And then he hit, right. hit hit the blunt, but really cool dude. I got his uh, know. Nice right here. Yeah, um, really Let's nice. Go. Guy, I'm I'm the goal the to get him on the podcast. So shout out to the goat. Yeah, and that's what's up, man. The loop. I want to you get him on your your cast soon, man. Definitely. Yeah, I hope so, man. He's a good dude. Good I'm time. Yeah, I think the time will come. It's gonna be a big year this year, you know. Or maybe We're you could be hot boxing with Mike Tyson over on his podcast. You never know. Yeah, you never know. And he trains amateur guys too and stuff. So hey, hey. yeah. What about yeah, this other awesome. dude? This TikTok dude. We had him on too, and he was. And we we told him to we told him to calm down. But his name was Lucky Chucky. You ever heard of this guy? Dude, don't give that man. The he did sixty that, days though. in. Is, he, well, did, what's did, his allegations? He did, he did he, do sixty days in. Well, he, he did, did like days six days minutes. In. <laughs> ten days in. Ten days in. I heard he did like six ten in, right? days in. <laughs> oh man. Oh shit. Oh yeah. dude. I, I, he, he tries to start beef oh. with everyone, bro. He's looking for whatever, you know. Facts. He's, yeah, he's only yeah. trying to cloud chase and yeah. start yeah. start fighting. He did everyone. nothing to the guy, and he started talking shit. Now he's in my DMs all the time. Fuck that dude. Like I don't what it. I literally did nothing wrong to, to him. I literally made a comment about something, and then all of a sudden he went ballistic. Like, yeah. <laughs> so emotional over strategy. I could see him doing that shit too. I could see him going off the handle I for no, no reason. I have no issues with that man. He's got all the <laughs> for nothing, you know? So, I hate you, bro. He keeps driving around this rented Maserati or whatever the fuck he does, you know? And yeah, man. Up. Hey, well, what's he in big driving right Let's now? Let's get to that. Ooh. I, got, I got the what? Nissan Rogue. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm talking Dang about. Wrong with that, man. Stack no that call, money, man. man. That's what I'm talking uh, about. Yeah. <laughs> that, now, that fucking money. Now, Ian, I do a, a top ten uh, prison YouTuber list every um, month, monthly, and uh, you've been literally in the top five every month. Oh, the I only, got number four. There we go. I beat the jumpsuit. only reason. <laughs> the only reason, Ian. The only reason you're surpassing the prison genre now. Now you're interviewing Chevy Chase. It's kind of hard to. You're almost at 1090 Jake, that's and you interview 1090 Jake. Mm, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Salute. So that's hey, why 1090 Chevy Jake Chase. ain't on this list. Yeah. yeah why how was the, the Chevy list? Chase interview? How did you? That's he's what a I said. Legend. Because he he like went yeah. over yeah. prison. He's doing all kinds of things like news channel. Chase man. Yeah, Chevy's cool, man. We're working on some other big names. Like my goal is, you know, you get the celebrities, you do an angle to to have them on the show, and then that kind of brings awareness to the to the normal stories, you know, like yeah. the Williams of the world, the 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 the, the average people, because that's what the show's about. Um, so mm -hmm. you use those celebrities to gain bigger traction to get the to the focus on the other stories. Salute. That's what's up. Yeah, man. It's almost. Are, are, are you are you kind of going with the. Uh... Soft white underbelly kind of concept, like with a little bit of a, a sauce to it, like maybe. I mean, it's always going to stay really trauma and prisony, 
Um, mm-hmm. There's so many stories. There's millions of people that have faced addiction and stuff, but we'll pepper in different things, different avenues, right. um, different people to talk to. But every story has got to be entertaining. Like I'm not going to just see he'll take like a normal construction worker or whatever and interview them. And that's great. That's his thing. That's what he's known for. You know, um, right. mine is more like a therapy session. It is the way yeah, absolutely I, and, and and the guys get on me right these guys right here to get on me because yeah yeah i was yeah. really nervous, I was really nervous yeah what happened what what did you do to him because he looked like he was so nervous he was, yeah, he 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 was shaky dude yeah. he, he did good man he did really good it was and, so formal and like to the point it felt like almost like a parole sit down like in the a beginning. Job in the <laughs> we even and we've even like, gotten to the point me, bro Ian, we've even gotten to the point where we're even dissecting the picture before your pod. So if you take a picture with William, you put your arm around him. You didn't do the same with 1090. Why didn't you put your arm around 1090? I don't know. It's just it's the way it happened. Now I don't even take pictures anymore with both of us. I just I have a Polaroid of all the guests, snap a picture of them. Because I'm doing all the filming myself now. I don't have anyone filming for me now. Ooh. Did so 1090 I, have like a like don't touch me aura? Like uh this nah, is my space and stay out of it. No, you, you go up and give that man a hug. I love 1090. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, nah, nah, I know, I know. He, you know, it's just you know, sometimes you, you feel like with the clapping and the presence might be a, a little different. I don't know. <laughs> no, I like him. <laughs> no, yeah, we, yeah, we fuck with 1090, man. We talk to him all the time, man. But no, but Ooh. so so TikTok first. Then YouTube or is YouTube first and then TikTok? For me? Yes. Um, I started TikTok and then I quickly transitioned to building all my platforms. So I started posting YouTube shorts. Every time I do a TikTok, that clip would go on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube yeah, shorts. Yeah. Um, but I didn't start my first episode until like four months later or five months later. Yeah, because it seems like you hit the ground running with the YouTube. It went crazy like it seems yeah. like you came out of nowhere, and then it's all I've seen for a while. So. Well, you're the fastest growing prison channel right. post COVID. I would, yeah, I would say it's definitely a lot harder to to grow in COVID, and also I think I don't think anyone can go on and, and do what like 1090 or 23 and one or even what JD. I, right. I think JD might be the last in the Mohegan for being able to grow on a webcam that quickly and tell right. stories like that. You know, I think yeah. it's very tough to pull off um, from yeah. a web perspective. I think I'm more in like Johnny Mitchell's lane. Um, right, Johnny, Johnny Mitchell. Yeah, yeah, that's a dope channel. I see you did an interview with him about three months ago. And uh, yeah. Jay and Williams Johnny also, he he yeah. self-made. He does all his stuff. You know, I did I did a podcast with Jay. I had him come to Boston. I seen you did one with him. So, yeah, yeah he yeah, self-made right. as well. So, I can understand well, he, that. They're in like that COVID group where they exploded during that. You know, right. what I'm, uh, Chad. Marks, all of those guys, um, they really stood out during that time period. And then they have that and they're maintaining that, which is great. Right. I started the way they started in the past year. I don't know if it would have had the same effect. I think you have to put a different spin on what everyone else is doing. Definitely. You got to be original. You got to be you. There's only one you in this world. You know what I mean, as long as you're you, just like the rap game, I always tell people, just be you, be original. There's only one of you. It's better to be a first, like, a first uh, impression of yourself than a second version of anybody else. You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. That's what that's what makes a generational artist is when they do that. Space, same with the podcast space. But let me ask you this. Why did you interview chatting with Stacks? Um, <laughs> you, want to come on the, you want to come on the show, man? <laughs> no, no, I'm just messing with you, man. It's just, <laughs> it's just funny. We got history hey, with him, bro. I, uh, I like, he's a good dude, man. I like, I've been, I beef with that dude for like two years now. Uh, you know, don't put this in the same circle as you. This is AZ Rux and saying that I just call him Rat with Stacks. But, <laughs> um, nah, man, I'm, I'm open to everyone. I give everyone a space to come on and, and share their story, and I don't judge, so I don't get involved. Yeah, in definitely, definitely. No, nah, no, nah, I know. No, nah, that's good. We always. Yeah. Down over here. Yeah. Are you gonna still interview prison YouTube, like the prison YouTubers? Like, cause you are. I know you mentioned death earlier, but you have literally took his lane. He doesn't. The way he he's made it more personalized. What he's done. You were right. interviewing people, and you could literally put people on, like DVS himself. Like, you know, I knew DVS before you interviewed him, but a lot of people didn't. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean it, it'll. Um, you know, I, I do want to get all the big people on there. I know, like people hate on like Wes Watson and shit, but. Like I would do an interview with Wes, but a lot of these guys are so fucking stuck up, man, and they think they're better than everyone. Um, that's what about my- Jessica Kent? I yeah, no, I've been talking to Jessica. I mean, she just went through shit with like 
her divorce or this and that. Um, but um, I've been talking to her and Burner about doing like a joint episode and then individual oh, ones. Yeah. yeah, so she's on my list. I've got a couple other female ones, but like some of these other ones, like Christina Randall, impossible to get a hold of. Right. Like, yeah, how, how do people not check their emails or read their? Sh it's fucking nuts. I know right? you do. You've actually wrote me multiple times. I, I you know, I tried to not. Go, I, I was trying to get you one. I never. I'm not a prison dude. I just do pods. But you were, you know, my guy's AZ, of course, he's been talking with you and DBS. Um, but yeah, so with Jessica Kent and Burner, like, would you ask tough questions with them? Yeah, I don't, I ask tough questions to everyone, man. Like, All I, right. I can't wait for it. Okay. You know, I'm ready I don't now. See anyone, I don't avoid questions. You know, we see where the conversation goes. Um, and, you know, we just ask questions that people want to know about. Hey, well, I got a good, I got a good spin for you. Uh, my mom had yeah, just recently started her uh, prison YouTube, but she uh, just retired 26 years in Arizona Department of Corrections. So I was always thinking, I was like, man, that'd be kind of cool to do an interview with you where her and I are right there. Because yeah. I was on the, she was on the other side of the fence and I went the complete opposite direction. Yeah, let's do it, man. I've done joint oh, interviews before. If if you guys can make it to Connecticut, I'm all ears for whatever. That would go viral, mom and son. Yeah. That's never been done before. That's crazy. Yeah, and AZ's the problem child, man. He's like, <laughs> I don't give a fuck about nothing. I'm gonna just do my own thing. He's a wild child, and he had everything handed to him. He just did not want that shit. Nah, he wanted I didn't it have the rough way. Handed to me. No, nah, it wasn't like that. We're not gonna say that. That's crazy. safety and security, and and a loving mother, man. I, the, oh I man, I wish mom, I had no. that. That's, nah, all yeah, that's, that's, that's all I needed, man. Some safety, some food, and, uh, and some hugs and shit. I'd have been all right, man. I heard that. Now, Ian, I know you probably try to avoid the Reddit, but the Reddit says that you might possibly be an uh, industry plant. You ever heard that before from anybody? Yeah, yeah. Where did you see that on Reddit? You got to send me this <laughs> one. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a kid's shark. Reddit is a dark <laughs> world, man. Reddit is a dark <laughs> world. <laughs> look that up ian vick reddit no way oh, it's a no yeah, no it's a uh, jessica world. it's in uh jessica kent's reddit it's called uh kent shark but they're saying th this is the thing you came out of nowhere right and actually i had a documentary someone did on me call me a plant so i understand people call plants when you do successful stuff like they just say yo you're yeah, you're a plant but That's have you have you never heard that before by anybody no, I've, I've heard that i think if anyone's a plant it's that fucking whatever that girl's name is the one that blew up she was a plant. Mm. Um, oh, you know, um, no. Um, the girl, the quiet girl that interviewed like Drake and um, oh, 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 Bobby, oh, yeah, yeah, Bobby, yeah, Bobby, yeah. Bobby yeah. She just disappeared. TikTok. She had a huge TikTok following that the industry literally planted her into the podcast world. She's Thanks. not a good interviewer. Nothing. She didn't know how to do it. They literally Very just awkward. she's awkward, and quiet. Yep. That that's but a that's plant. What, that's what you people know? like. Yeah, those are for yeah. the autistic people. Oh, that's the Bobby chick, right? Yeah. That's who you guys yeah. are talking. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She got burned by Drake. That was funny. A few people. Yeah, not really. It worked her. She's advantage. known for having actually, like the most awful. It actually interview. boosted everything that she's standing on right now. That Drake, yeah. that was hardcore. They were in the bed together, and she just made everything yeah. just like weird. Exactly. Exactly. I think that one got taken down, if I'm not mistaken. One of them, another rapper, but yeah, that was pretty controversial. No, now, cool. now the memes that, the memes came flying everywhere when you and 1090 did an interview. It was Bobby Hill and McLovin. Do you get that a lot? <laughs> I, I, I see the comments. I don't even really know who Bobby Hill is, but I see what they write about him. <laughs> oh, Bobby, Bobby Hill, Hill is one of the, of the conspiracy Hill. cartoons, like almost like a spinoff of the Hank Simpsons. Hill's son. He's Hank Hill's son, King of the Hill. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> hey, you guys hear that uh, Bill Feezy got arrested? Nah, huh? Whoa. Yeah, they said Bill Feezy got arrested. Plug will have a documentary up tomorrow. Who the hell is that? Um, yeah, I had him on my show, the Craigslist Bandit. Oh, no, I didn't get to see that one. Uh, I didn't know he had arrested. Take a look at that. Yeah, guys, go look up the, the Craigslist bandit. Yeah, the Craigslist band. You guys don't know who Bill Feezy is? I know who he is. Uh, I know who you're talking about. No. I just didn't know he got arrested. What did he get arrested for? I guess a probation violation. Oh, yeah, no, they, oh, they'll get you. 
Hey, there's nothing worse when you get a probation violation and you're sitting back in, in jail and you're like, man, I was just out on the streets. Like, yeah, I was just about to get in my slippers and get in the shower now. type shit. Hey, tell yeah, him yeah. that black box story, AZ, real quick, because he's going to Then you could ask him when you interview him, uh, Ian. It's funny. Wait, the black box? Yeah, yeah, your probation or your uh, house oh, arrest box. So, so the extension cord. I was on an ankle monitor, and uh, I was only allowed out of the house from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And keep in mind, I was a drug addict. Um, uh, I was selling drugs before that, but then I started, you know, I was using drugs, so I was still a drug addict. And, uh, well, I had to get high, so I saved up some money, and I bought 500 feet in extension cords. I had one unplug. I plugged it in, and you could come over to the apartment complex at 3 in the morning, follow the orange and green cord, and it would be in somebody's apartment, and I'd just be sitting there chilling. <laughs> so I ran That's how that you do it. Forever. I would just <laughs> carry this black box. I, I, I robbed a dude for $8,000 while carrying the black box. He got arrested by the feds, <laughs> and I knew he sold drugs, so I creeped into his window and found $8,000 in $100 bills, and I creeped, crept through the window with my, uh, with my little box. Where, where's my cut? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 right. <laughs> you guys got to give me a cut. Shoot me some cash. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> And then, so who do you, so who do you, who is your dream guest? Because you've already interviewed some of the biggest names in pop culture. So who is your dream guest? Definitely like Mike Tyson. I want to do Gypsy yeah. Rose, uh, Jelly Roll. Um, oh, that was good. Um, yeah, I see you've been you've been fishing for Gypsy, man. I've been trying to help you out with that. I've been dropping your name and her goddamn. Dude, uh, need, dude I think it's only a matter of time because um, you know. People, one, she's doing crap interviews, and it's not her fault. It's just the, the, the people don't know what to ask her. She needs someone. She needs to go yeah. on some channel that's been to prison before and have a real like interview. You know, Facts. So yeah, one of the one of the most amazing things that I heard her come out of her mouth was that she felt the safest as soon as they took her away and put her in jail. Yeah, that's crazy. You know her story. Her yeah. story is crazy. Yeah, she went through some shit. You know, fucking nuts. But I think she'd be great on the show. Thanks. Oh yeah, definitely. Because you'll ask what? those questions too, so it'll be good questions coming out. What's the line? What's the line though? Because you, we see Soft White on her belly. We see what he does. He interviews chomos. Would you ever interview a chomo? I'd interview a chomo. I think it's a good perspective. You got to. Would you want to smash him out? Are you going to smash him out on the interview? Come on, Have man. you ever got? <laughs> well, you can't. You can't really ask. Don't even ask that, because. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I'm not someone. I'm not what. I'm not. I'm not well. You know, I'm not well. <laughs> no, yeah, JD. I do it, bro. I wouldn't be able to do it, man. I, 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 I would have to have so much restraint. I would have to be behind a glass window or something. Dude, I just. Well, it's good to get the perspective. That's why I have cops on. I have everyone, all sides of it. You know. And yeah, you that gotta, officer, that corrupt officer, that was on right after me. Uh, what was his name? Uh, Steven Dominguez. Yeah, I like his story, man. He well, we've seen that. you do I, skits with JD, and you pretended to not actually be a ch well, I don't know if you pretend to be a choma, but you pretended to be a victim, and you know, like the way y'all did skits. So, I mean, <laughs> it's satire to you at the same time. <laughs> Comedy, yeah, yeah. No, it's 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 all funny, you know. It's it's fun. It's entertaining, and that's all it is, you know. Yeah, for all you derelicts out there, I mean, you got to have tough skin in this game, man. Coming into this, you got to know that there's going to be dickheads just like you guys popping shit for no reason. <laughs> you, so, to, you know, you yeah. Yeah, thank you. Now, yeah. if you don't want to answer this one, of course, uh, but here's a here's a tough one. Uh, is there one interview that you were just kind of like, eh, I could have lived without doing that one? Um. No, I, I think it's when I do the second ones, you know, the 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 part twos. Uh, I'm staying away from that going forward, um, okay. unless someone has life changing circumstances. Bringing on a part two, one it never performs the best, and two it's just like it's kind of repetitive and stuff. Right. Um, but I mean, other than that, you know, like I like all, every episode has a different spin, and it's always the episode you least expect that um, that do the best. You know, but I I know like if it says murder or gang bang or any of that or shot caller, those always blow up. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the algorithm loves the 
<laughs> Bullshit. Yeah, facts. So, I mean, you need the catchy stuff to to drive attraction into the episode, you know. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's all you need the job to keep. Yeah, dude. It's, 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 that's the name of the game. It's all part of it, you know. Big facts. And do you have any one interview that's your favorite that stands out the most to you? Um, what are I, you know, I like the Chevy episode, but I really liked um like the prison gang um shot. I liked the one with JD. That was my first one that really blew up. I I like the Steve mm-hmm. as one, the corrupt guard. Um, yeah. you know, anyone where anyone has a complete story and they're willing to come on and tell it and they kind of talk their own narrative. Um, I think those are the best because now I'm at the spot where I just let the guests talk. And those those do the best. Yeah. Right. Facts. That's good, you interviewed man. Hector Bravo, or are you going to interview him? I, I did, yeah. Did. I, I had him on my show. That was a great episode, too. I like that one a lot. Yeah, he's he's killing it right now. And he's like yeah, you. He man. started very, very quickly. Like, he, he's just blowing up. Not as good as you have, but he's right behind you. You know, he's doing really well. Yeah, we've had him on the show as well. It's a different well, perspective. You- Go ahead, go ahead, my bad. No, it's a different perspective, you know, so that's why his does so well. Now, do you think uh, the difference, because he's blowing up, he's doing really good, um, but do you think it makes a difference when you go to prison versus people want to see a prison guard? Um, I think the prison guard part is is a cool angle as long as um, they're open and honest about it, you know? Like you guys, like with me, I think where I found success is being open and honest about my situation. You know, Um, that's one of the things I respect the most about you. You keep it real. You keep it a buck. That's why I fuck with you. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. But I think I think that's what people. You know, it was a different taste of scenery. If I came on right acting like a JD or something, it wouldn't have worked for me. You know, people see right through that shit too. Like you can always be you. Like I said, be yourself. New creators are trying to go that approach, and that's just not the way to do it. You know, there's already a, a field in that. You know, people have right. already done that. Now, out of all the nicknames that uh, you've heard, which one do you like the most? I like McLovin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying. What about yeah, yeah. That's the best, man. <laughs> Listen, I got four pitbulls, and one of them is named McLovin. I call him Mick, but that's my dog. Oh, that's my I love pitbulls, man. That's yeah, so I got four of them. One of them's McLovin. He's all black and white. Aw. So <laughs> little Brendo, you know what I mean? I got pics all on my IG, but... Tell That's McLovin. my main homie. He's like a pocket pit. He ain't getting Tell no bigger. Me. When are you going to be back in the ring again, Ian? Uh, I don't know. I'm taking some time off, kind of just, uh, you know, I'm lifting and, and and whatnot and just working on my business. Um, and, and we'll see, you know, well, when the time's right. Do you have super bad chicks calling you make love? In? <laughs> um, some do. The, the, the TikTok comments are always very funny. That's what's up. Yeah, TikTok is a different world, man. Yeah, I love <laughs> the they're, they're they're always very funny. You gotta love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're a good sport. That's what's up. Thank you, you gotta have thick skin to be on here because the internet's undefeated. I say it all the Thanks. time. Yeah, dude, you have yeah. to, bro. It's it's a must. Yeah. You gotta be able to laugh at yourself, be honest, and just have thick skin. Like it is what it is, type shit. Yeah, absolutely. You gotta be built for it. It's a scandalous world. You gotta be built for it, you know. Yeah. And Would I'm you ever go on No Jumper? Yeah, dude. I, I've talked to him before. It hasn't really connected yet. 1090 plugged me in with him. I think I'd be perfect for it because he loves those prison stories. So I think like the great ones would be like the yeah. guard touching me, running out of the prison. Yeah. Camp, things like that. So I think it's just, you know, him catch. They, no Jumper actually put me on when on that paid for protection clip. That's where I really blew up when it did uh, like 12 million views on my shorts back in uh, April. Wow. Um, that that went viral on every platform. Fucking no. Yeah. So that that and, and really you paid how much did you pay for them to post it? Nothing, dude. They picked it up. Everyone and was that like, all starts wow. with being honest. You would just be an upfront and honest yeah, about the situation. And then um uh, and it benefited you. That's crazy. Yeah, and then World Star picked it up, you know. Wow. That's crazy, man. Yeah, dude. That's, I was that's crazy. crazy. Well, tell people real quick that don't know, you know, haven't seen your story. I'm sure most people have, but just elaborate a little bit on how the paid protection came about. 
Um, I mean, so pretty much I, I was at the Fort Dix low security prison and then these, these guys from D.C., you know, pulled up on me. They thought I was moving around too much, trying to get into cell phones and gambling and, and everything. And, you know, they pretty much pulled up on me and they were like, hey, um, you know, um, you, you got to pay us and, and we'll protect you. And. Uh, this and that, and we'll hold your phone for you. And and I was like, nah, I'm good. And you know, they they smacked the glasses off of my uh, face. That's how people still make the joke. My cheeks are still red from that slap, <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> uh, which is pretty funny. But um, you know, um, that's what happened, and and that's how I, you know, I was getting close with the New York car and stuff, and some guys that didn't really have much. And I just, uh, it wasn't like, hey, can you, um, can I pay you? to protect me. It was like, I just started giving them some commissary and shit and they started looking after me and other people, those DC guys kind of backed off because they didn't want to get step on these guys' toes. Right. right Smart right. move. Now, I was going to ask what was the biggest difference between the people that approached you and the people that you approached? Um, I think they were just more genuine, not scumbags. <laughs> the people that uh, approached me, they're, they're fucking pieces of shit out for no good, you know? Yeah. Intention, right. Yeah, there are some booty bandits. Oh, <laughs> oh man! Hey, did you uh, hear about the DC guys that they're booty bandits? Yeah, you heard about them. <laughs> yeah, have you ever uh, ran into anybody since you've been out? Um, like that, uh, that I was in prison with, or yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've had people I've been in prison with on the show before. Definitely, um, my old bunk mate. I've had different people like that. Um, but. I've run into guards in Danbury because there's a Danbury federal prison. Wow. And I live in Danbury uh, and things like that. Man. Now, have you ran into them uh, just randomly? I know you had people on, you said, but like just randomly after the your success? Prison, no. I mean, people will reach out, but um, guards yeah. I ran into randomly. But most right. of the people I was in prison with were not in this area. So, Right. I got you. And you're able, you're financially stable where you're not, you're, you don't even have to do like what you were doing before, like with the club, you're, you're literally sticking to the content, right? You don't have a, do you have a normal job as well? No, no normal job. I just do this, man. And I'm building my studio business. I have a studio um, that I'm trying to get clients and help other people make clips and monetize and everything like that. So that's my brand side. new too, right? Brand new studio. Yeah. So that's, that's what I do. I'm Congratulations. Like, Thank you, man. Hey, congrats, man. Well yeah, deserved. Yes, that's right. what I got going on, you know. Um, I'm just it's it's a grind. Definitely. Yeah, no, nah, definitely. All right, don't call me gay for this question, but a woman asked me to ask you this: Would you ever do OnlyFans? OnlyFans. Yeah, <laughs> funny story. I actually had an OnlyFans last year when I was just starting out. I don't have it anymore. Uh, I made a few grand off of it, dude. It's uh, you run out of content as a man, you know. Unless like you do like boy girl, like where you have a girl that you're willing to like consistently do that with. Um, but just like having a me by myself, I kind of ran out and it was like, yeah, fuck this. I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll just jack him off on camera. <laughs> oh, man, 50 grand, yeah, man. You piece of fuck. Fuck. They were paying me. <laughs> they say Burner 420's got an OnlyFans too, man. Look for him, man. I respect <laughs> <laughs> These girls can do it. So can the men. Who cares? Do you think? Yeah, I know. I know. Um, you and JD's relationship. Would you say that's your best friend in YouTube? I don't fuck with him, man. He's a piece of shit. <laughs> JD, <laughs> JD, the <laughs> yeah, right, bro. Y'all are like, that's my big oh the shit, they should big bro. <laughs> I, I, I love uh, JD. Yeah, JD I'm seems like he's a cool dude, man. Uh, I, I like his his uh his vibes, man. His vibes are pretty cool, especially on that uh hunting show modes and shit, man. That's definitely uh something I want to try to see if yeah, I can. Yeah, he's like uh, a WWE on. character. <laughs> yeah, he gets he gets he's all of that shit. Yeah, he gets yeah, he's lit. Yeah, he gets hype, bro. Make make yeah, up kind of pedophiles afraid like, again. Yeah, that's what works for him. Yep. Make a pedophile yeah. piece. So, no, like I said, you got to be you. That's him. So I mm -hmm. respect that. Absolutely, absolutely. No, uh, yeah, no, nah, yeah, definitely, man. And fucking, yeah, we, hey, listen, Ian, we appreciate you coming on here, bro. Yeah, um, he thinks so well, man. You know, he came on my show, so he hits me up and says he needs me. I'm here, man. DBS, yeah, man. Yeah, you, we, 
What about Woody? You got Woody coming on, right? Yeah, he hit me up. He actually texted me. Asked Good me old that. Woody. Bro, yeah. his story is Woody. crazy. Yeah, dude. Whenever yeah, he's a crazy you guys, story, man. His story is bananas. Whenever you guys want to come on, just you know, hit Will up and Hell we'll yeah, absolutely. we appreciate yeah, you. definitely. Yeah, of course, definitely. Well, he's, got, he's he's the new entry, man. You know, all community. Yeah, I gotta hold the gates, man. I'm at the gate, man, and I'm, I'm, I'm the gatekeeper, man. Oh, man. The Will's troll the at the gatekeeper. <laughs> Yeah, man. How's the love life? Are you a bachelor? Um, I've been seeing someone. You know, we'll see where it goes. Um, okay. I, I know, dude, I'm I'm low key. I don't go to the clubs. I, I'd rather stay in. You know, I work hard during the week, and I like yeah. my low key at nights, and I keep my circle close. And and you got to, you got to, especially you, nowadays, bro. You you're working on your baby, man. Your baby, you keep on working on that, man, because. Dude, I see these people that are going to the club every weekend doing the same yeah. shit. One, not only is that dangerous when you're out till 2 a.m. fucking so drivers, crazy. this and that, but it's just like that's it's a fact. Can you see that? You're around people that aren't grinding that are just together, just nine to five, yeah. and then they're going out to the same fucking shitty club. I, like you know, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not doing any of that. You know, like you're, you're not yeah. gonna I, unless they're paying me to go into that place. I'm not doing it. I'd rather go to a nice restaurant with my friends. Um, right. Or or a girl, not not go to the club and stay there till two a.m. trying to get laid, <laughs> or even just chill in the house, man, or go to a waterfront or you know something nice, yeah. man. Something, Dude, I like the house. I like the solid. apartment. You stay in the apartment, stay inside, watch a movie. Yeah, we pay for this shit. Well, might as well use it, right? Yeah, yeah man, make it as comfortable as possible and just do I'd what you do. Rather drunk in my own home with someone I care about than Facts. fucking be around a bunch of strangers where you know it's just dangerous. So. That's what we gotta be doing at this time, this age. You know what I mean? Absolutely, absolutely. I agree. It didn't work out the first time when we were doing that <laughs> shit. So. No, it didn't. It didn't work out the first time. You just gotta, you gotta be cautious. You know, you gotta be cautious. Nice. And you gotta stay optimistic, man. Always stay optimistic. Now, before we go, I got one question, and this is usually what I ask everybody: What is your conspiracy that you believe in one hundred and fifty percent, and why? Um, what was that again? The 50%? Yeah, hit me with that again. What is your conspiracy that you believe in 150% and why? Conspiracy. Ooh. Yeah. Um, that that Bobby girl's a plant. <laughs> I was just about to say that. <laughs> Let's go. The one. <laughs> that Bobby yeah. girl is a Bobby plant. Bobby is a plant. Yeah, I'm not really into the big conspiracies like when they talk about, you know, like 9-11 or this and that. No, that's a good one, though. Yeah, but Bobby, yeah, that was that, like that. Yeah, Bo Bobby's a conspiracy theory for sure. Bobby, you will plant. You will plant, Bobby. She's not very good looking to me, bro. She's like nah, a freaking nah. board. She's like a – you ever seen the Ed, Ed, and Eddie with the little board? I get it. That's the, and yo, that's attitude is she's everything, smart, and that I've, shit I've is ugly her, to me. I've it's heard her talk. Book. When she's not in her acting mode, I've heard her talk and she right. on interviews of people interviewing her, and she's very smart. Very yeah, that, that's a whole character. She knows what she's doing. She knows what mm -hmm. she's doing. I'll give her that, you know? Facts. Yo, Joe Diaz, yeah. you're absolutely right, man. I'm holding it together, man. Just holding mm -hmm. it together, baby. They said DBS was like Steven Seagal. Stig <laughs> Steven Seagal, baby. Yo, don't do my man like that. Oh on, my God. He's kung fu fighting and all that. I can't. Oh yeah. man, Ian again, man. Thank you, bro. Yeah, hey, thanks thank for you, having me, guys. It was a pleasure chatting. I'll see you guys soon. Definitely, yeah, yeah, bro. Thank you, man. Much respect, Appreciate you, dog, bro. from Boston, Massachusetts. Ronnie Blue Eyes, salute. Peace yeah. out, guys. Az Love Peace. from the Cactus State. Let's, Let's go. go.